Well, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Catching Up with Cameron. I'm your host, Cameron Mitchell, and I'm really excited to bring on ULM's defensive back coach, Xavier Brewer. How's it going? Appreciate you having me. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me, Xavier, where are you from? Originally from Jacksonville, Florida, so I claim as my hometown. I was okay. born in Denver, Colorado, so I've kind of been all over the place. When did you move to Jacksonville? When I was 11 years old. But yet you still consider that home, even though you were in Colorado for 11 years? <laughs> I do because I have most of my friends there. Okay. And, uh, you know, middle school and high school is where you build most of those friends. But I do have a lot of family in Denver still, so I kind of split both. But uh, yeah, we're all we're all really close family. I'm the middle of eight. Really. Very cool. And your dad was on the Denver Broncos, correct? He was. Yep. Football family. Did he want you guys to pursue football, or did he not care at all? Um, you know, I don't even know if it was ever brought up. It was just kind of one of them things like we all loved it at a very young age. And uh, my older brother, uh, being obviously uh, going through the process way before I did, uh -huh. you know, just growing up watching him play, watching him play, you know, it was obviously great inspiration to me. Was your high school big on football? It was a newer high school, so the school opened in 2000. The head, same head coach is still there, Daryl Sutherland, great man. Uh, cared about you more as a person than you cared about you as a player, wow. um, but also was a heck of a football coach. And uh, the class of guys that we walked into my sophomore year with to this day is one of the best uh, classes we've ever had at that high school. For me, it was pretty awesome because I got the opportunity to uh, get recruited by just about everybody around the country. Except for Florida State, and unfortunately, Bobby Bowden didn't want me, but it's all good. <laughs> so how'd you narrow it down to Clemson? Then? I thought it was a place where I can grow um, on the field as a player, because they've they've always had uh, guys go to the NFL, but there's also a place I thought I could grow as a man as well, you know, be developed. Very cool. So what was it like when you guys won your first ACC championship? It was it was great um, to be able to get that opportunity to bring the first one to Clemson. You know, it was a long yeah. overdue, but, um, you know, Coach Sweeney came and he, he created the right mindset, the right culture. Uh, within that program to get it where it needed to be. Did you expect to just get drafted or what What did your agent say? What were you going through during the whole NFL draft process? Yeah, so I was expecting to go late round uh, mm -hmm. to undraft it. Okay. And then uh, it was just kind of crazy because I got three phone calls in the seventh. But mm -hmm. then my agent was telling me, you'd rather go undrafted because you get to choose where you want to go. I Going into that process, honestly, I didn't know all the details about that. I just like, every other young kid from college or growing up you want to, the plan is to get drafted not to go on yeah. drafted yeah and so i was i was one of the guys i was you know i was able to choose which place i wanted to go to so it was a really cool opportunity i guess because you kind of had that control did you not feel disappointed at all that you went undrafted oh um, it, it did make make it feel a little bit better and you know yeah. i was able to uh go to a place where i wanted to go the most difficult part for me was i just it simply got beat out on special teams i didn't I didn't make the team on special teams, you know. Yeah. So what do you think? What happened? Like, why? Why couldn't you? Oh, um, I would just say there was guys that were better than me. That's really? really? What it comes down to, yeah. But was that discouraging to you at all, or? Oh, definitely discouraging. You know, it's, it was a dream, but it is, it is what it is. Life's about how you respond to it, not about what happens to you. So tell me, how'd you respond to it then? I responded with it by trying to continue to chase it. I actually, right when I got cut from Dallas, I got called by a few Canadian teams, but I shut that down because I just assumed I'd get another call from the NFL team. Right. January comes around, it never happened. Okay. Uh, and then so I wanted to keep playing the game, but an opportunity opened up in my hometown of Jacksonville to play arena ball for uh, the hometown team. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I was personal training out of facility at the time. Okay. And uh, that transitioned into an opportunity for me to start my own thing. Yeah, X Factor was born. And, and I had a middle school football team I trained. It was like 35 kids. Wow. And uh, that turned an opportunity to, they lost their head coach. And oh. I walked right into that. And uh, so I did that for a season. After that season, all about, about pretty much 30, 35 of those kids wanted to continue training with just me. So obviously I had a huge football clientele. And then from there, we started a Under Armour Flag Football League. And then from there, we started a travel 707 team with some of the top guys in Northeast Florida. We were traveling around the country, Southeast mostly, but we, yeah. we played national teams. And then and I would train softball athletes. I had whole teams. I had baseball athletes. I had uh, lacrosse, actually 
the training lacrosse programs were like thousands of kids and would be able to do that uh partner with uh a local uh program soccer <laughs> did it all and then also did a personal training with uh fitness fitness clientele as well it got to the point where like you know what you know, it's probably time to start getting paid doing this because this is probably what I want to do when I'm 40, 50, 60 years old. Thankfully, the opportunity opened up again uh, for Clemson for me to come in January 2019. I always knew that's where I was going to start my my professional co coaching career yeah. was at Clemson. And uh, yeah, it was a no-brainer. It was kind of surreal. So you, um, you obviously, you still had football in your life as a coach, but it's a different type. You're not playing the game yourself. Did you at any point feel like, oh, I'm missing something from football or was coaching just still equally as fulfilling? Oh man, it's a different type of fulfillment. I, I tell players all the time, like y'all are lucky. You can still take your anger out on somebody legally on the field. So like, part of my game, I was very physical. Now I got to take it out on some weights in the weight room. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all, that's that's my release now. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest thing for me. But like for me, I was always a student of the game. I always loved studying it. I always loved uh, learning. So for me, it was a, it was a smooth transition because it was like something I've always loved anyway. What's it like working with Coach Sweeney now as opposed to having him as your coach? Mm -hmm. Or what was it like? I know you just switched. So I would say the biggest difference was probably just how much more I learned. All really high quality stuff about yeah. like leadership and development and empowerment. Not just, you know, it's not just giving somebody something, like empowering them to want to be the best version of themselves. So not just giving them the, the tools, but also empowering them to use the tools and okay. how to use the tools. So how did you end up getting this gig with ULM? Well, Tommy Bowden was funny story. Tommy Bowden, was who I signed to originally at Clemson. And his brother is Terry Bowder. So Terry, he got out of head coaching from Akron and wow. apparently he's the right man for ULM. And here, here he got the job. And uh, okay. so he's the head coach here now. And uh, when he met with me, uh, Coach Sweeney, Coach Venables, everybody who he talked to uh, recommended me as the secondary coach. So here we are. I'm thankful to be able to give back to uh, a new generation of guys over here at ULM. Do you want to one day go to the professional league? What, what's your ultimate goal with coaching? Oh, I would love to coach in the pros for sure. Um, yeah. I, I want to be a head coach, either at college or at the NFL level. So what type of legacy do you hope to leave with the guys of ULM? That at the end of the day, for me, it's just about making sure they know I gave them everything I had mm -hmm. um, and making sure at the end of the day that they felt I had their best interest of helping them become the best version of themselves. Whatever that is, whatever is on the field, off the field, that I push them to become the best version of themselves. And uh, still from Coach Winnie, I want to be able to see them at 30 years old, that they come and hug me around my neck and I get to, you know, see their kids and hug them yeah. and uh, be somebody that they're proud of to know that they were able to be coached by. Yeah. And then rather than the opposite of them, turn looking the other way, you know. Awesome. Uh, so, so what, do you, what kind of advice do you have for people who may be in your position and who may feel like, oh, I should give up, I keep getting told no. How did you keep going? One, just figure out your purpose. What's your why? For me, my, my, my passion and my why was to make a difference. My passion was football. And my purpose was to make a difference. So it was like, stay around the game one way or another. And so coaching football was my purpose. So I would say it starts with finding your purpose and then um, having the right attitude, you know? And no, like I said earlier, knowing how to deal with adversity. Even if I get told no or if I go through a failure, I'm like, okay, this is happening for a reason. Everything that bad that happens, there's always gonna be something good that comes from it if you, Focus on that. So now if you focus on the negative things, <laughs> um, guess what? You're, you're going to be stuck in that. But yeah. if you, if you, even with negative things happen, you try to find something positive that comes from it. So I got cut from Dallas Cowboys. Well, guess what? How many people can say they had opportunity with the Dallas Cowboys? You know, so it's all about mindset and yeah. uh, perception, perceiving how you perceive things, I would say is very important as well.
Well, very cool. Long-winded answer, but I think it's all very important. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Once again, that was Xavier Brewer, defensive back coach for ULM. I can't wait to see what you do for ULM this coming season. I appreciate you having me on today. It was great to talk with you. I'm kind to get to know you a little bit. You get to know me a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, hey, thank you guys for catching up with Cameron.